So I work at Nielsen. I run client services for the mobile team. Uh, I serve uh, North America, Nielsen's uh, biggest market research company in the world, probably best known for the TV ratings business. The TV ratings business is actually only about 40% of our business, so big consumer side as well. And uh, what Michael asked me to focus on is maybe something a little bit different. So I cover ad networks, publishers, uh, brands, agencies, retail, financial services, everything. And uh, one of the things we've, we've looked at a lot lately is, uh, is retail and how does mobile fit into um, the pathway to purchase. And I think it's important for, uh, for this group because it's a very, very big opportunity. So if you think about retailers uh, in general, retailers' biggest uh, capital expenditure is real estate. So these big box retailers, they, they buy 30-year leases uh, and have spent a ton of amount of time and money on research to pick the store. Next biggest expenditure is all the stuff that they need to fill the store with, right? The inventory. So if you think about those two giant investments, uh, a little bit more money invested in mobile to get people that are already around your store into your store and either spending money from zero uh, or increasing basket size once they're in your store is actually a fairly trivial expenditure for these guys. So I think it's a very, very interesting market for mobile developers to be in and, uh, and applications are right in the middle of it. So I think we've got 18 slides in 15 minutes, so I need to shut up and keep going. Um, so this is year-over-year -year growth by category. Um, it's mobile web, but it's a decent proxy for applications too. Uh, real estate um, is sort of a, an anomaly there. It's sort of an interesting thing in and of itself. But you can see some banking, trading, and financial services, education, these things are in the top. Shopping and, and auctions um, is one of the highest growth categories year-over-year. Year. So this was August to August from this year. Another thing I want to touch on is this is not a uh, smartphone world or a tablet world. This actually is a, so you heard Chris's uh, keynote this morning. This is an applications world. So if you think about applications in the broadest sense, um, we need to bring tablets into the conversation. We need to talk about seven inch tablets and 10 inch tablets. There's various use cases that'll manifest over the next couple of years. So these are some of the differences between what people are doing on smartphones and what they're doing on tablets. And there's a few key things here that uh, matter for retailers uh, and are circled. So things like using the camera. So by the way, smartphone is in yellow, tablets in green. Things like using a camera. People are not using cameras on tablets. So this is relevant for retail because barcode scanners and things like that, product lookup, uh, SKU is a big deal using a camera. Uh, Location-based services, actually much, much higher on the smartphone. By the way, 60% of tablet owners today only access via Wi-Fi. So tablets are not floating around out in the wild that much right now. Um, and then finally, uh, on the far right, this is just mobile shopping or e-commerce in general. Tablets way over indexing. I actually think about tablets, and there's a ton of research behind all that stuff, but I actually think about tablets as a platform for shopping when you're not shopping. Mobile is actually the platform to use while you're actually shopping and, and the in-store experience. Um, so some big differences there. The other thing about tablets I'll point out, uh, this is response to advertising, looking at uh, the iPad and dark blue and then all connected devices. So we include iPod Touch, um, even Sony PSPs and things like that. Um, and what people did after they uh, saw advertising. And you can see these giant skews on the iPad. So there's a, there is a receptivity to advertising that's happening on the iPad right now that I think probably will apply to tablet, the tablet category in general um, that, is, that is highly driven towards uh, people making purchases. So you can see all the SKUs there. People, from top to bottom here, it's made a purchase online, made a purchase in the store, uh, bought something over telephone, or actually made something through the device. M-commerce is quickly turning into sort of this uh, almost like a red herring for what's actually happening uh, with commerce. So, you know, two or three years ago, or even four or five years ago, we used to talk about m-commerce as the next big thing, and everyone wants to talk about NFC and point of sale and all this stuff. I don't think that's it. I think it's more about uh, getting people into the store. It doesn't actually matter how they pay, as long as you're enabling them to buy more stuff when they're in the store. So a little bit about mobile and the purchase funnel. Uh, traditional purchase funnel type stuff, right? So if you look at pre-purchase activities, top funnel, what happens when you're in a store, what happens uh, at point of sale, and then what happens after the purchase? This is a very critical one. Um, these are the types of things that are happening, right? So pre-purchase, you're looking at store locating, 
uh, doing a lot of search, price comparisons, stuff like that, looking for coupons, mobile couponing is sort of one of those things that I think is probably about to, to jump by leaps and bounds. Um, importantly also down in the bottom here is just a little bit of insight um, and I'll just touch on it. I think from a, from a mobile web, at least what we see in the data, from a mobile web perspective is more about comparison shopping and, um, and upper funnel type activities. Mobile apps are very, very transactional. Um, people download apps to do things. They're, they're utilitarian in nature, right? And so when it comes to actually purchasing, Amazon's got this re down really well uh, in their application. It's you know, minimized, about minimizing clicks and getting somebody uh, to a point where they can actually order something as fast as possible. That seems to be the app experience versus the web experience, and that applies across tablet and phone. Um, In-store, it's a lot about price comparison and, and looking at product information. There's a social shopping uh, element to it, which I'll touch on in the next slide. Um, importantly for in-store, tablets are not in-store, generally speaking. Um, purchase, actual purchase, and despite, you know, we'll see what happens with Google Wallet and all this kind of stuff. Um, it's fairly low incidence. Uh, purchase on mobile devices tends to be um, smaller, uh, smaller uh, basket size, and also very, very particular types of items. So, like uh, consumer small, small ticket consumer electronics, obviously digital content, games and ringtones, and that kind of stuff. Um, we'll see what happens with PayPal and ISIS and all that stuff over the next couple of years. But that is a long term. Believe me, that is a long term evolution before we get before we get there for mobile payment. Uh, Post-purchase, uh, I think, is sort of the most glaringly obvious place that's missing right now. Um, retailers have this opportunity, once somebody has participated in uh, mobile activities with their brand, of actually connecting with that consumer after the purchase, and they're not doing that today to a large degree. And, and these are opportunities around um, loyalty cards and, and people, um, people engaging with uh, activities like tracking orders, uh, social media, writing opinions or reviews about their experience or their items that they purchase and this kind of stuff. So uh, there's a big opportunity there. So I'll just go into each one of those stages real briefly here. Um, so pre-purchase, uh, this is category of mobile search. And it's very, very interesting that the top ones that you see are the ones we usually see, right? Maps and directions, uh, weather, news. But what's interesting here is that shopping is, uh, is right up towards the top of the list in terms of what people are actually searching for. So if you think about search on a mobile phone, a lot of times it is around where to buy something, and, and frequently it's where to buy something now. Um, and this is what I referred to about, this is a situational usage of uh, tablets and e-readers and smartphones. We're looking at e-readers a little bit separately right now because different use case, different demographic, 60% of e-reader owners are women, uh, which is kind of the flip side of, uh, of the iPad. Um, but this is from, I'll touch on a couple things here. From left to right, everybody uses their device at home, right? Uh, between smartphones, e-readers, and tablets. Uh, but the key difference is here, green is at work. So smartphones are at work, tablets are not at work. Um, and then uh, in the car, so traveling in the car is another one. And then on the far right at retail, right, you can see this 59% of smartphone owners using their phones at retail, 21% of tablet owners using their, their tablets at retail. So very, very different use cases for these two things. And that also goes back to what uh, Chris was talking about this morning, really developing a, a different strategy for these two devices. They are not the same. And so this is something that's kind of interesting. Brands, I think, there's, we, we ran a study with Yahoo last year, and, um, or early this year, and there's, there's all these activities that people are doing while in a store, right? So communicating via text, sending pictures, um, IMing. The point is they're not shopping. The, these are things that are not related to the in-store experience. And so one of our messages, so we grouped all together, we call it social shopping. So about 50% of people are doing these activities while they're in the store. Um, about half the people, these are non-exclusive, but about half the people are also doing things that are about shopping. Um, the point is, if you're a brand, someone, someone's communicating back and forth with their social network and this kind of thing, why not try to steal some of that time, right? And have them talking about, talking back and forth with you or engaging with your brand as a retailer. So. Um, I think this is a, it's, a, it's obviously a big, everyone here has done it, right? But it's obviously this big thing, like what if you, what if you could transfer some of, that, some of the social nature of a person on their device already into a conversation with you uh, as a retailer? Um, this is another one of those, uh, another one of those slides about you know, the, diff the, the big differences between these two platforms. So 
this is a frequency. It's kind of like the other chart as far as the situational use, but this is frequency. So what this shows in, this, in the middle bar here is that 56% of tablet owners say they never use their tablet while uh, shopping or running errands. And you can see a pretty decent distribution across smartphone, right, in terms of frequency. Um, you know, shopping is, is one of those things that uh, people do several times a week anyway. So, it's the, so the frequency of access to this type of information and this type of relationship with retailers around your uh, local area uh, it's just a very, very important metric to keep in mind. E-readers obviously are not going out. The e-reader thing I actually think might change a little bit. You know, we'll see, we'll see what happens with, um, if we see a similar trajectory with Android tablets that we saw with Android phones, I think it gets real, real interesting next year in terms of what, what classifies as sort of an e-reader and what classifies as a tablet. Um, coupons are gaining traction. Coupons have been one of those things, been fairly slow to, to, um, to get adoption, but Around 70, so about 10% of mobile users, by the way, this is sort of the overall 10% of mobile people participate in some kind of e-commerce. Um, mobile coupons, about 17% uh, in terms of penetration of that group, so not too bad. A couple years ago, that wouldn't have been that big. So here's the part about point of sale uh, that's really important, is there, is there is great interest in people using their phones as credit cards, and this is sort of a top two, bottom two, however you want to look at the, the graph, but um, sort of interest, interest level on the left, and then concerns on the right. People have huge concerns about privacy. So 96% of people at least have some concern over privacy, of personal information, credit card information, for using their mobile phone at retail. And then finally, on the post-purchase side, uh, we really focus a lot on rewards. So um, one of the things in this business that's sort of funny is you, you have all these people checking in, and and yeah, all these, all these retail brands really want to create this, this environment where people want to talk to Target, you know, people want to um, be in this conversation loop with Target or Best Buy or whomever. Um, but you need something back, right? Consumers at some point will get tired of just contributing all the time, right? You can't give and give and give and not get something back. So this was a question around um, what types of branded apps people like to use. And by far, right, something with rewards, um, was the most popular. And this goes into sort of, if you look at Coke strategy around my Coke rewards and the SMS program, a very, very successful program. Uh, so lastly, I'll just touch on a few different trends here. Um, this is category of apps used in the past 30 days. We've seen some similar data, but this is the trend. What I really like about this is we see this massive growth, right? So this is just from Q3 to Q1, so just six months of growth from 17% to 26% in terms of uh, penetration. So this is a category that's taking off. Um, similar, to, uh, similar to the App Store stuff, it's very, very critical to be top of mind. So this is from, a, we have a metered um, Android panel uh, and iPhone panel, but this is, I think this is Android data. Yeah, this is just Android data. So top 50 Android apps take up about 65% of all time spent. And so it's very, very critical. So this is, um, on the left is uh, apps and different types of functions on the device. So you can see things like Messaging, about 14% of the time. Browser behavior on Android, only 9% of the time spent. Uh, apps is, uh, apps in a general sense of third-party apps is about 55%. Um, the time spent in the top 10, you can kind of see the distribution here. In top 20, half the time is spent in the top 20 apps. And Facebook, obviously, is a large part of that. And then lastly, uh, a, a little bit on QR, because all the retailers are obsessed with QR. A bunch of the brands are obsessed with QR. Very, very bad um, sort of uh, awareness at the moment. Now, it's, it's getting better. This chart, you know, a year ago uh, looked worse. Uh, but this is awareness, and so the purple bar is not aware. So pretty much any way you slice it by any demo segment, people don't know what's going on here. I'll, I'll tell you a story. I was uh, talking last week. I did a guest lecture at UT. I, I live in Austin. And uh, I was waiting for the bus, and a lady came up to do a survey around um, the new bus signs. There's a whole, the whole thing was about mobile, so I'm kind of geeking out. I didn't tell her what I did for a living, but she asked 10 people, what do you notice about this sign? And it had, uh, you can call in for the new schedule, you can text in, you can enter this web address, and then it had a big QR code right at the bottom. And every single one of those people picked one of the other three options. Nobody picked the QR code, and one guy, nobody really even knew what it was. One guy said, do I have to download an app for that? I don't really get it. And, uh, and you know, so there's a big, big awareness problem. Uh, with QR codes right now, but I, th I think it'll get better, but that's kind of, that's kind of where it is right now. Um, so conclusion, uh, SEO for, for um, 
early funnel activity is very, very critical. People are searching uh, for retail apps and, and retail information. The in-store, um, so from a development point of view, the in-store uh, situation is you want to pitch retailers on having that conversation about them. That's what they're obsessed with right now, is how do I get a consumer talking about me and my brand? And then, you know, app or web is sort of this thing about, you know, using location and driving utility. That tends to be the application uh, sort of sweet spot. And then uh, on post-purchase, you know, they love all this stuff around loyalty. Various retailers are rolling out big loyalty programs and stuff like that right now. Um, so it's a good time to have that conversation with them. That's me. Thank you, David. <laughs>